everybody, Kim here. And Chad, the paper tiger. And, okay, I need to chat here for this one because I did not receive a response within 30 days from the LDS Church letting me know that they had done what I had requested them to do. Um, I had requested that they take my Uncle Raymond off their baptism and temple records because he didn't, one, he didn't fit all the guideline requirements when he was baptized after he died. My great uncle Raymond died in Normandy, France during World War II. He was fighting, he's a, not only does his family have to deal with this, that he died in the war, we have to deal with the fact that the LDS Church took it upon themselves to baptize him. And not only did they baptize him, they gave him temple ordinances and then sealed him to his parents. And his mother doesn't fit these guidelines either. What are the guidelines? So the guidelines are either the person who submits their name to the temple for baptism is a close relative. Well, the person, I know the name. The person who submitted his name was not a relative, let alone a close relative. Hmm. The second one is, if you're not a close relative, you have to get permission from a close relative of that person. That was not done. Because my grandmother, my great uncle Dick, and my great uncle Joel would have told them to shove it up their ass. As well as my great aunt, great aunt Tootie, who idolized him. He was her big brother. She idolized him. Um, so if you can't get permission from a close relative, which there were close relatives alive, you have to wait until 110 years after their birth. Well, he was born in 1924. He was baptized in 1995 in the Tempa, or Tempe, Arizona Temple. Sorry, 1924, 1995, that's not 110 years. Not even close. And so I wrote a letter, and I'm really sorry, I'm just going to back up here a minute. If I use any strong language, I really apologize for that. I'm going to try not to. But, um, yeah, the person who submitted his name for baptism in the Tempe, Arizona temple was not a relative, never asked for permission from a close relative, and... Those bells you hear in the background is our dog saying, I need to go outside, so I'll be right back. And they didn't ask for permission from anybody. Because the ones who today, which is 2023, are no longer alive, except for my great aunt Tootie. They didn't ask my great aunt Tootie. And I know what my grandmother, who died in 1999, and my great uncle, Dick, who died in like 2004, 2006, something like that. And my great uncle Joe. They would have told him to go shove it up their keister. Um, so, as I, since the LDS Church chose to ignore me and nor, ignore my request, that leads me to believe that one of two things. One, they just don't care. Because they have said, well, we have these guidelines, but you know, if our church members don't follow it, oh well. Nothing we can do. They don't do anything to check and see if what was required was done. They're just like, oh well. So, <clears throat> where was I? So, since he was baptized in the temple, and he received his temple ordinances, and he was sealed to his parents, that leads me to believe that my great-grandparents were, were baptized as well. They shouldn't have been. 
They weren't LDS. They didn't follow the guidelines to make sure it was okay to baptize them. Um, and it could be that the church just didn't care when I wrote them the letter. And I was really nice in that letter. It took me a long time to compose the letter to send to them. Because I know you catch more flies with honey than vinegar. So I made sure I composed a very nice letter asking them to take him off of their roles and off of the temple roles and the baptism and everything else. Well, come to find out, as I did more, more research after the 30 days had passed, when he was baptized and received his temple ordinances, he got the McKelsnick priesthood. Do you have the McKelsnick priesthood? Well, that's that's kind of when I left the church. Um, the bishop says, Chad, uh, why don't you come on over to my house? We'll go down to my, my basement. I have a box downstairs with all the McKelsnick priesthood uh, awards. Come on over into the basement about 10 o'clock after my wife's gone to bed, and I'll get you one. And you said? No. No, thanks. I'm yeah. good. So. I'm lying. But. Um. Since you received the McKelsnick priesthood. And I. You, you've got to be married. Or, it's it's an ordeal. You're you're an adult leader of the church with the McKelsnick. And I also found out that there are TBMs, which stands for True Believing Member. Or true believing Mormon, um, that they're taught every person on this earth who has died, who never accepted the word of Joseph Smith. And that doesn't mean, or actually they said, hasn't heard the words of Joseph Smith. Meaning, I thought it meant they just hadn't heard the word. Well, it's kind of hard not to hear the word of the Mormon church. No. That you've heard it and you've accepted it. So if you're a Mormon in good standing and you left the church, if you're like, you know what? I'm not believing that BS. That's not for me. Thanks. I'm out. You're going to be baptized after you die. And there's nothing you can do about it. They have no do not baptize list. That's one of their religious ceremonies. So the government, because of the freedom of religion, they're allowed to do that. There's nothing that prevents them from baptizing every single person. It's just like they're not supposed to um, baptize Holocaust survivors. Didn't they get sued for that? Yeah. Who was it that they baptized? Anne Frank. What? Anne Frank. But these are just guidelines. So they're not supposed to baptize Holocaust survivors, but nothing happens if you do. They're not supposed to baptize celebrities. Oh, well, if you do. We told you, but we're not going to do anything. So. Now... So you sent them a nice, polite letter. Mm -hmm. We need this to be done. We did not agree to, agree to this. Um, you didn't even ask. It's not that we didn't agree. You didn't ask. Right. Um, now, you said something earlier about what the main reason you think they're just ignoring you. Because I'm a female. Women are treated horribly in the LDS church. They're not valued. They're just there to be baby machines. Hmm. Seriously, that's all they're there for. I haven't heard those words, but from what I've seen and complaints I've heard, yeah, yeah they're just baby machines. Because as God was, man will become. And they take that to mean, upon death, if they re receive the ultimate level of heaven, mm -hmm. which is the celestial kingdom, 
they will receive their own planet. Because God was once a man on the planet. And once they're once they receive their own planet, every woman who has been sealed to them in death will be eternally pregnant to develop all of these celestial ch children to come down to the new earth. That's kind of L. Ron Hubbardy. Mm -hmm. um, now, it's funny. Growing up in a church, um, family members, friends, everybody, I'd never heard this stuff. Um, and the way the LDS church is broken down, there's wards, which are the individual churches. Then there's stake centers, which is a group of wards. Then there's, it goes up from there, like almost a military hierarchy. And every ward is different. But they all believe the same thing. The, to a point. That's the funny part. Um, now, like when I, I tried to get on with the city of Auto Falls Police Department, um, you had to go to the ward that the city personnel director went to. Not just be a part of his church, go to his actual ward. And everybody was very clear to me. Oh, yeah, you've got to go to the 11th ward to get a job with the city. But you can only go to the 11th ward if you live within the boundaries of the 11th ward. So you have to live in the right neighborhood. But people just show up there. Hi, I'm Steve. I, I'm in the 18th ward, but I'm just going to pop in the, this one. You know, hi. Can I have a job? Yeah, you can have a job. You know, that kind of crap. So you see, you know, growing up, I saw the, the all the negative. And it was really, you know, there was a big power play because I went to a church that wasn't very nice. But then when we ran into our good friends that lived on either side of us uh, when we got a house, very nice people, wonderful. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they took the good parts and made it part of their life. And then, um, and I'm sure they did the same thing with the bad parts. Well, now we're just going to go. Um, so when we talk about the, these things, we found some bad things that people are doing. And I am incensed. I don't call it indignant righteousness. Mm -hmm. I think, I feel I have every right to be upset. Here. They had no right to do what they did. Have some love. <laughs> there, have some love, cuddly. <sighs> Feel better. Feel the dog love. The, the, do the, the dog mom love. Um, now, the entire... The entirety of all this. And Kim brought it up, and an idea that when we were discussing this. Is this how they become the fastest growing church? In America? Because they say, the church says, on the Church of Jesus Christ, oh, Latter-day Saints.org, which is the church's new website, because they don't want to be called the Mormons anymore. I don't know how that's ever going to happen. But, that, okay, A, when you're baptized, that's free will. Excuse me. Is that apple juice? So, if you're baptized after death, how is how is that free will? Just ask him. You know, and I was baptized. I baptized myself for the dead on many occasions. Of course, I I had altruistic. No, that's not the word. Alternative motives. Because I, I wanted to meet girls, so all the girls were going. <laughs> um, and I had no idea. I hadn't he ever heard of any of this. So this is, you know, when you hear about these things. And you go, okay, we've done some research. We've gone through and found it here, 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 and here. But, let us just say, the baptized for the dead is a personal issue that we're going through. Um, and... So we, we found that this is our truth in the matter. Yeah, so basically, and I'm, I'm not trying to upset anybody. I'm not trying to cause a faith crisis in anybody. But if you are not 
a good standing member of the LDS faith, when you die, you will be baptized. No matter what anybody tries to do or what anybody says, you will be baptized. And if you're male, you will be given temple rights and you will receive the McKelsnick priesthood. Now, on a, on a brighter note, I mean, if you're a male and you're baptized in the LDS church after death, you, you automatically get your own planet. Well, with, if they reach the highest kingdom, highest yeah, level. But, you know, the way it sounds, you, they just, they're running fast and loose with the rules. You know, hey, give that guy a planet. Uh, give him about five to 12 women that are uh, permanently pregnant. Right. You know how I mean, miserable how many that women would be want for... to be eternally pregnant? Not me. <laughs> I did it twice. So that's be, enough. It would be like that Monty Python sketch of the third world. Jehovah, Jehovah. <laughs> Every sperm is sacred. I'm sorry. Every I'm really upset. This isn't my normal try to be happy. Let the heathens cast their But yeah, I just want you all to know. The dusty trail. If you're not um, at TBM, you will be baptized. And any family members of yours will be baptized. Even if they haven't been yet, they will be. Is there anything we can do about it? Nope. There's no do not baptize list. There's do not call list, but there's not a do not baptize list. Well, according to South Park, LDS is the right religion to go to heaven. Oh, according to all the TBMs, it's the right religion. It's the only religion. All other ones are fallacies. They're <laughs> there'll be all these guys abominations with little name tags and short short sleeve white shirts with black ties running out. Hey! Yeah. The the one really good thing about the LDS Church is funeral potatoes. True. Funeral potatoes. So yeah, in the church, whenever somebody passes away, the ladies get together and they have a dinner for the family. The Relief Society. The Relief Society. Society. <clears throat> and they bring Funeral food. potatoes. They cook a ham. They do all that. Now, funeral potatoes have gotten that name because, well, they're scallop potatoes covered in cheese and they're delicious. But they appear at every funeral. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like a running gag, funeral potatoes. Um, now I have talked to some women that they're in <coughs> horror wards, and so they don't do the funeral potatoes. Why do I want to go to a funeral there? <laughs> we're we're going to go to the good ward where they got the good funeral potatoes. Right. Um, where they don't put the cornflakes or the whatever on top. Uh, oh, the potato chips? Oh, I hate that. Oh, I haven't well. seen the potato chips. Oh, well, the crunched up potato chips on top of your funeral potatoes are just soggy and nasty. Yeah. yeah. Because, you know, that's one of the things. We, I mean, in our faith, in, in finding a place to express our faith, snacks is right up there on the list of priorities. Uh, funeral potatoes. I mean, oh, that almost pushed us over the edge. But then when we went to uh, Kim and I both grew up in a small town that was um, predominantly LDS. Predominantly LDS, and the ceremonies were boring. If you could take Southern Baptist and LDS and go, I want to see some some dancing and some speaking in tongues and some snake handling. That would be awesome, you know. I'd like to give my testimony. Bam, bam. I believe the church is real. And you know the old ladies with the big hats dancing around. And you know that's the sad part. That'd if you awesome. go to, is it the first Sunday of every month? That's the testimony. Yeah, no, oh God. Everybody in the con congregation stands up and says, I know the church is real. I know Justice, Joseph Smith is a prophet. And the church he laid down is real. Kim was going through, like telling, we were discussing the the foundation of the LDS Church. I go, gee, 
is it just me or Joseph Smith is pulling a lot of stuff out of a hat? Well, you know, the fact the if you look at Joseph Smith on his own, mm-hmm. he was a scam artist. He went around with his seer stones and would look for lost treasure or yeah. buried treasure. Oh, sorry, I could it's right there, but it fell deeper in the the ground because we got close and but I had this picture in my head of a LDS magic show. And it's all based around a hat. Um, oh, yeah, because he translated the Book of Mormon by putting the seer stones in his white stove pipe hat. And he would... <laughs> hey. And then he would tell, tell his scribe what he saw. Which means he probably had the notes in there. Hey, Rocky, watch me pull a prophecy out of my hat. That trick again? That trick never works. This time for sure. If you're old and ever watch the Bullwinkle show, you'll get that. But most of you aren't that old anymore. Um, <laughs> see, I'm trying to calm her down because she's pissed. And it is something to be very angry about. Mm-hmm. The fact that people are doing this. Because honestly, I... I'm like, well, he's got two religions now. I'm trying to think of, you know, positive thing. She's looking at it like they've violated our family, our his how he's religion in his heart. What he what did he want? Nobody can really tell because he's dead. The family didn't want it, weren't asked, and they did it. That's what's making him angry. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm like. Okay, how do we fix it? Let's write a letter. She wrote a letter. They ignored us. Besides going down there and cracking somebody on the kneecap with a tire iron, nothing's going to change. His name, no matter what, his name's not going to get taken off the rolls of the LDS Church. Yeah, they say you know, just because we baptize them, they don't. They aren't automatically added to the church rolls. Well, you know what? You give them temple ordinances and you give them the McKelsnick priesthood. You added them to your church. Yeah. And they went, oh, one more member. Because when they baptize you for the dead, they dunk you ten times. You get baptized for ten people. So you figure there was 30 of us. So that's 300 people got baptized posthumously by the LDS Church. And this happens every day. Three, four hundred in a church. One ward come, comes on Monday, next ward comes on Tuesday, and they do it continuously. Okay, no, I I know you've said if they don't have enough people there to fill in and be baptized for all the dead people, you could be right. baptized more than your ten times. Do they ever have a time where there's not enough names submitted? No. You know, not that I know of, um, to be not honest. Not that you've experienced. Not that I've experienced. Like I said, I was just there for the girls. And they put them in the, the white robes that once you dunk them, they, you know what happens to white robes when you dunk it, get them wet. Um, I, my cousin Ben, his daughter was married in the temple. Temple recommend, there you go. She went home, they started their life, Here's a house. And he went, okay, here's the deal. You're going to stay home and have babies. I'm going to work. You're going to give up your dream of, what was it, veterinary school? I forget what You're going to stop going to college. You're going to stay home and have babies. And she That's went, it. The heck I am. Nope. So nope. they got a divorce. Yeah, out of the blue, he dropped this bomb on her. Because once he had sealed in the shirt. Well, she went, and they got, she got a divorce. And then she said, I want to be unsealed from him. The church wouldn't unseal her unless he asked. And they went to him and went, do you want to unseal from her? She goes, no. He goes, no. She sealed to me for, for all eternity. Yeah, because even though he had gotten married again and sealed in the temple to whoever this new wife was, he can be sealed to more than one person. And, of course, Ben... Ben's the kind of guy who 
doesn't take no for an answer. He's a good, solid man. Well, he's the one that his mom went to the bishop. When the bishop went to him and said, you know, Chad, you need to go on a mission. And you said? No, thank you. I'm going in the army. And they said, you go on this mission or we're excommunicating you. Which today is not excommunication. It's disfellowship. Disfellowship. And I went, okay. Bye. Because this was not a happy place. Church was not a good place for me. There was me, another fat kid, and then the prom queen, and all the cool kids. So we were ridiculed endlessly in this church. So I'm like, you know what? I'm good. Bye bye. I'm not going to spend two years on a mission when I can go gunning and running. Bye. And he goes, okay, we're going to separate you. And I came home and I told my dad, who called his sister, who went there. Who is his cousin's mom? Yeah, so, and she says, listen here, you dirty. That's not how it works. You will not. She was a bear. Love you, Anne. Miss you. Ben is just the same kind of bear. Um, before his mother passed away, she had, uh, she was on her third husband. We used to call her the Black Widow. Third or fourth husband. I don't know. Um... It was before my time. So. And he would slap her around. And Ben went down there one day and pretty much put this guy through a wall. Ended up in jail. Ended up in jail. And the sheriff's like, hey, hey Ben, come on in. You know, sit down. You want a donut? You want a donut? We're going to order pizza. Oh, yes. Yes. Come here. You can, uh, you can come give me loads. We're having funny joke time. But um, coming from a family of... <laughs> Oh, yeah. Um, and I married a woman. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so we may have to take a trip down to Arizona so she can give the stink eye to a guy across his bishop desk. She gets a good stink eye. I thought I gave a good stink eye. Okay, here's my stink eye. Here's mine. <laughs> Which would you rather be, would be more scared of? I mean, I would take on criminals, guys with guns. Mister, put that gun away or I'm going to put it up your ass. She scares me. You wouldn't believe where she told me she was going to put my gun. She, she made dinner one night. And I'm sitting there like, that's not very good. Is it, do we have any, you know, salt or pepper or anything? Oh, no, it was a ketchup incident. Oh my God, she cooked this beautiful piece of meat. And he wanted to put ketchup on it before he even tried it. He hadn't tried a bite of it. Where's the ketchup? She scared me. She, I mean, she like, she threatened me with things that, as a correctional officer, I'd heard nightmare stories about, about what she was gonna do with that steak. I think it was called a Texas chili bowl or something. I just, um, I cried, she made me cry. So, I haven't been able to touch ketchup since. So yeah, I just wanted to let you know what you can expect when you die or loved ones die and there's nothing you can do about it. But hey, on a lighter note, starting to cool off a little bit here in Texas. It is? Yeah, it's, it's, it's been down around 100 to 105. Okay. It's dropped about 5 degrees normally every day. I was like, it still felt really hot when... Stinky and I would go outside. When you go outside and it takes you to your knees, yeah. Help! Help! So, okay, so that's today's video. Sorry, it's not a more uplifting, fun. And we're still not saying anything against the people who are LDS. It's the messed up beliefs of their church. What, what church? The LDS church. No, the uh, the one in Arizona. Oh, the Tempe Temple. Yeah, Tempe, Arizona Temple. You got a Texas Chili Bowl coming, pal. You better make that happen. Hey, nice talking to you, everybody. Like and subscribe. Make us a fixture of your YouTube journey. Bye.